the show. <laughs> Mondays are always nice and hectic because I try to load up my work on Monday. Why, you may ask? It's a good question. Monday's far from ideal. Um, sometimes I end up playing late on Sunday nights and you're tired, right? That said, Mondays are good because Grandpa's here to watch the kids. So Mondays, we do a little coffee, bright and early, 9 a.m., and then I often do some sort of work for PokerCoaching.com. Today we have the monthly poker coaching webinar. It's an interesting question, an interesting spot, playing 20 big blinds deep, that almost everyone answered very similarly. And almost everyone got it wrong. <laughs> it's always good whenever you find a spot that everyone universally screws up, because that's a spot where everyone, myself included, can learn to play better. So that's pretty fun. We're going to be going through that, not here, but at PokerCoaching.com as soon as we are done. We actually have a cash game challenge happening at PokerCoaching.com starting in the very, very near future. So make sure you check that out. And, 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 this is important. I'm giving away a $5,000 buy-in seat to play with me on Poker After Dark next season. Just giving it away. I have to pay for it. I'm giving the money. Believe it or not, you don't get to play on um, Poker After Dark or shows like that all that often. And seats in those games are hard to come by. They just don't give them out to anybody. And they allowed me to give away a seat to one of you. Assuming, you know, I, I put I put the buy-in. But I'm happy to pay the buy-in. It's only 5000 bucks, Only 5000 bucks. I'm giving away. So make sure you get into that giveaway at PokerCoaching.com slash PokerAfterDark. Okay? Eric says, this is the best content on YouTube. Well, that's probably not true, but I do my best. Thank you for the kind words. If you all like this, click like, click subscribe. Is this live or pre-recorded? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's one of the two. Um, okay, today. Happy New Year, everyone. I want to talk about how to make 2021 the best year yet. I know it's gotten off to a rocky start already in the world, <laughs> but it's important to focus on the things that you can control. And you, first off, need to do an assessment of your life, of your situation, and ask yourself, what am I very happy with? What, what, what's, what things are already going great? Things I don't really need to change all that much. But then also, what do I want? What am I trying to accomplish, right? And that is going to be a different thing for, for lots and lots of people. And I realize that COVID and things being locked down may or may not make this, this tough. That said, don't use it as an excuse to not do the things that you want. So let's say you've been like uh, Jonathan Little. Let's say since COVID happened... Um, you got a little bit out of shape. I'm not horribly out of shape, but I'm a little bit out of shape. I used to go to the gym in my building every day, every other day, something like that, pretty often, to, you know, reasonably get in shape. And since COVID happened, they closed the gym downstairs. So now the easy gym access got turned off. But that, if you think about it, is just purely an excuse to be lazy. Because in reality, you don't need a gym to work out. There's a book I read a long time ago called Convict Conditioning. It talks about working out without anything at all, just an empty room. <laughs> and um, I used it a lot whenever I would travel to poker tournaments, right? And get in pretty good shape without having anything at all to work out with. And the fact that I have slightly gotten out of shape is not good. Now the question becomes, do I actually care? It's very, very important to ask yourself if you actually care about these things, right? Um, and I do. I want to be in decent shape, right? Um, a good example of things that I've sort of, um, I don't know if I've semi-given up on it, but semi-given up on is like learning a new language, right? I would love to learn all sorts of languages, but, but I am not willing to devote a substantial amount of time to it, which means I don't really care about it, right? Um, that said, your health is vitally important. Your health is going to give you longevity. If you are horribly out of shape, 
turns out you are not going to be able to do anything else to some extent, right? So you definitely want to make sure that you are in good shape. That is pretty close to vital in my opinion. So say you do want to get in shape, all right? What you want to do, in my opinion, these are all my opinions. I'm not a, not a doctor. I'm just a degenerate gambler. Um, what you want to do is you want to write down your decision for what you are going to do, right? Say you want to learn Spanish. How are you going to learn Spanish? Figure out a way to do it, right? Figure out a way to put in study. Figure out a way to interact with people who speak Spanish, etc. If you want to get in good shape, figure out how to do it. And assuming you've never really done these things before, and these things are all kind of new to you, you definitely want to start small. There's a book, Atomic Habits. I have not fully read this book yet. I'm not affiliated with this book in any way, but I like what I've read so far, and it talks about developing small habits that are easy to stick to. Because if you decide that you are going to, let's say, get in sick shape, so you're gonna go from working out none to working out six days a week, two hours a day. Hate to break it to you, you're probably not gonna do that unless you have some sort of insane amount of outside motivation. Outside motivation may be weight loss bets or um, your partner threatening to leave you or something like this, I don't know. Most people don't have an insane amount of outside motivation to do much of anything. So assuming you don't have that, then you wanna make sure that whatever you decide to do is actually doable, right? Um, perhaps the reason I've always failed learning other languages is I would try to go too hard, right? Um, if you decide that you're gonna start studying a foreign language an hour a day every day, but you don't actually have an hour a day every day to commit to it, that's not ideal. Sounds like Fedor and his 1%. I actually have a book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. Here it is right here. And the main man in charge of Pokar. Nice profitable backing company, Alex Carr here. You see him? You see him? This guy. He, he has a chapter in this book on getting 1% better every day. And it turns out that getting 1% better every day will go a long way to helping you improve your skills. Now, what is 1% every day? It's a little bit of an arbitrary thing. But if you improve something in your life every day, that's going to go a long way to helping you get better, right? If you get in shape, if you learn poker skills, right? Say you want to get better at poker, right? If you want to get better at poker, the answer is not play more poker. That's a good way to get a little bit better, but the right answer is to study a ton, right? If you study a ton and you do a little bit of studying every day, even 15 minutes, let's say you study 15 minutes a day for the next year, what's that come out to by the end of the year? 100 hours of study, roughly? 100 hours of study, literally four days straight of studying. And it turns out if you put in even 15 minutes a day, and your opponents put in none, you will have studied a substantial, substantial amount more than they have, which is gonna give you a substantial edge over them. And that's what we're doing with things like our cash game challenge. Every day, we will be emailing you a piece of content relating to cash games that is actionable, that will help you improve your skills. You all ask me to play small and medium stakes cash games online, show you how I do it. I did it, put in two sessions. I know it's not a ton, small sample size, but we crushed them. Absolutely crushed them. And it is still doable in 2021. Poker is a s nice, beatable game. If you're watching this video in 2031, maybe that's true, maybe it's not, who knows? But in 2021, the games are good. And if you are not winning, if you are not crushing them, it kind of implies you're playing poorly. And if you're playing poorly, it implies you are either not paying attention to what you're studying or you're just straight up not studying. And I wanna make sure that you all succeed Watching this show, a little coffee has made you a better person you reckon. Well, I hope so. <laughs> it, either, it either has or it hasn't. Zergster, good morning. Welcome. It's an interesting name. Okay. So what are some other ways to develop these habits to help you get in shape? If I had it my way, which I do not because um, I'm in a relationship with another regular human, um, I would have a very different environment. For example, when I built this little office here in a closet, believe it or not, it's not all that big. You can, you can touch the walls, they're just right here. 
Um, I wanted to have a pull-up bar in here. Why? Because I knew that I wanted to use it on a regular basis and get in shape. If you put a pull-up bar on a door in your house, any one of them, let's say the door between your living room and your bedroom, any, any door really doesn't make a difference. Um, and you determine every time I walk through here, I'm going to do however many pull-ups is normal for you. Let's say one or 10 or five or whatever. Let's say you're going to do one pull-up every single time. If you do that, if you walk to your bedroom and back, what, five times a day, you will have done five pull-ups by the end of the year. What is that? 1500 pull-ups compared to if you do none, right? And that is highly valuable. Changing your environment, the area around you, is going to go a long way to helping you succeed. People ask me all the time, how do you remember the, all these preflop ranges? The answer is I reference them a ton. I have them out and I look at them. If that's against the rules on your site, don't break the rules of your site. But if you put them on the desktop of your computer, that kind of thing just starts getting seared into your mind, right? If you resolve, all right, at the beginning of day every day, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to run one poker simulation or I'm going to study one poker hand, whatever, just a little bit. That's going to go a long way to helping you. Just like set rules for yourself that you must follow. Kind of like you wake up and you brush your teeth. Some people do, some people don't. Or before you go to bed, you brush your teeth, right? You probably brush your teeth at least once a day. You do that every single day. It's become an easy thing that you just do, right? And you want to make whatever you want in your life become just an easy thing that you do. Um, another good example of changing environments. I realized a while back I was drinking too much alcohol. Why was I drinking too much alcohol? Because it was sitting around the house ready to be drank. So what do you do? What's the solution to that? Nice, easy solution. Stop keeping alcohol at the house, right? Perhaps that seems um, over the top for some people, but if you actually cared about such a thing, if you care about not drinking so much anymore, then don't have any alcohol at your house. Or resolve to only have drinks when you go outside. In the COVID time, that means no drinks. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Enjoyed Matt Affleck's preflop range webinar the other day. It was fabulous. Great. I'm glad to hear it. Louis Philippe. He's been running our study groups. They've been going amazingly well. Shout out to Nick, who won the 1650 yesterday for $4,000. Congrats. 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 How did my online go yesterday? Um, I think I lost a little bit. Played a $2,500 tournament. I got to seven starting stacks and then did not get in the money. That's annoying. Turns out that'll make you not have a good day. You've had two bourbons this morning. Oh, you mean this month. Exactly, right? Anyway, you want to essentially make it easy for yourself. If you make doing the things that you have determined you need to do easy, you'll probably do them. But if they're hard, then you probably won't do them, right? Like, let's say... I have this computer desk here. You all can't see it because the camera's right here. But imagine I had a bottle of whiskey sitting right here, staring me in the face all day. Let's just pretend like that's the case. I don't. I actually have books to read staring me in the face all day, right? I get bored. I sit down and I pick up books and I read the books. Um, but imagine you had a bottle of whiskey there. You're probably going to be inclined to drink the whiskey, right? Just makes common sense. But if you have no whiskey here, out of sight, out of mind, to some extent. Um, now I realize some people have addictions and whatnot. We're not necessarily talking about that. Again, I'm not a doctor, just a degenerate. But I know that if you keep things out of your mind, you will be less inclined to deal with them, right? Study groups are thriving. If you're a poker coaching member, definitely check it out for sure. For sure, for sure. Do we have the New Year sale going on? I don't know. Check out pokercoaching.com slash cash game challenge. That's, that's a good place to go right now. Um, also, I think it's important to make sure that you set a plan while you are very clear-minded, right? Because when things get tough, you are going to be weak, or you may be weak. You may be inclined to be weak, right? I'm not going to say you will be weak, but you may be inclined to be weak. So when times are tough, like, um, for example, 
whenever you're playing poker online, as I know a lot of you do, whenever you play all day, you have like four deep, four runs, four deep runs going, and then you just bust all of them. You had, I don't know, $1,000 in equity, then you have zero or 250 bucks for your min caches. You, at that point, may or may not be tilting. Maybe you won't, maybe you won't, I don't know. But if you're tilty right there, then you may be inclined to splurge, whatever that means. That may mean playing a heads-up sit-and-go and trying to double up or go broke. That may mean having your bottle of whiskey. That may mean um, going and watching TV for the next four hours until you pass out. Whatever it is. Any sort of either slightly negative decision or detrimentally negative decision is way more likely to occur then than when you wake up fresh, ready to go, right? It's easy to do stuff in the mornings. It's kind of tough to do stuff late at nights, at least for me and for most people. So whenever you know that you are live to be your weakest, right? When you know you're inclined to make bad decisions, you need to develop a framework to not make bad decisions. Good example for me. I know towards the end of the day at poker, if I bust all my tournaments and I'm like, ugh, grinded eight hours, lost a load of money, I am pretty inclined to go have some wine and cheesecake. Pretty inclined. So what's the solution to that? Don't have wine and cheesecake at the house. Don't have anything bad at the house. Right? And the fact, like, at that moment when you are the most inclined to do that bad thing, whatever it is, if you don't have those things around, you have two options. You can either get them, which, you know, it's sometimes, it may be easy, maybe not easy, depending on where, where you live and your situation, but you can either get them or you can just resolve, I am not allowed to get them. And I've resolved, I'm not allowed to get them. So if you know they're not available, I'm not allowed to get them because I want to be at least a reasonably good version of myself. I've already designed that in my mind. I've made that decision that I want to be a reasonably good version of myself. Then you're not going to succumb to your temptations or whatever you want to call them, your, your devils, your demons, right? You want to make sure that you and your weakest have, have something in your mind that forces you essentially to make the right decision. And setting up your environment to make the right decision is an easy thing you can do while you are sane, right? Like right now, it's early in the morning. I don't especially want to go have a bottle of wine, right? So, okay, I can resolve right now. All right, you know what? Let's get rid of the wine in the house. And let's um, not, not fall into it whenever things go poorly. And then whenever that happens, you will ideally not do that. Edgar says, I've truly changed your life. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Wine and cheesecake isn't that bad, dude. It's not, but it's not optimal, right? This is where you have to ask how, how strong are you trying to be? I am trying to be exceptionally strong. I play a high stakes competitive game for a living, right? And in order to compete at the high stakes against the best people, you have to perform better than them or at least comparably to them and I've seen what some of my competition does. They are insanely regimented. Because to, for some of them, their livelihood, their life, highly depends on it. So if their life and their livelihood highly depends on it, they are going to do everything they possibly can to not screw up. I'm in this weird spot where I'm not like filthy rich, but I have plenty of money to where I don't have to worry about it so much. But if I play high stakes poker against the best players in the world for the next five years at a disadvantage, I could go broke, right? So I'm not trying to go broke. I'm trying to continue. I'm trying to continue accumulating wealth, right? And that implies I need to make sure that I'm playing with an edge, okay? And I know that if I have a piece of cheesecake three out of four days, and I have a bottle of wine three out of four days, and my opposition does not, they are going to demolish me. They are. Straight up. They're going to demolish me. So, do I want to get demolished? Not really. 
So if I don't want to get demolished, I in turn need to make sure that I am making good decisions and some things like wake up on time, study, make good relationships, don't butcher your mind. These are like obvious things, right? Do you reward yourself after binking a tournament? No, I don't reward myself for getting lucky. Whenever you win a tournament, you ran hot. I, I have always thought the idea of I was lucky, therefore I should reward myself as asinine. Why? Because like whenever people win a slot machine, right? They're like, oh yes, yes, I won the slot machine. I'm so happy. But like in reality, they're, they, just, they just ran hot. Why, why would you celebrate for running hot? Um... And look, I mean, I want to make it clear, I'm certainly not perfect, but in the ideal world, you would rather perform at a high level than not. Ship the Cheese says, doesn't LeBron drink wine every day? I don't know anything about LeBron. I presume you're referring to LeBron James. Um, there are certainly some people in the world who are absolute godlike specimens. I'm not one of them, and I don't think most of them, most of you are. Um... I don't know anything about basketball. I watched the Michael Jordan documentary, and it seems like everybody was kind of uh, goofing off. Turns out if everybody's goofing off, and you are the most physically fit one of all of them, the most naturally physically fit one of all of them, then maybe you can get away with goofing off too. Um, if nobody's goofing off though, as I think is becoming the case in the highest stakes poker games, not very many people are goofing off, then you can't get away with goofing off either. And it turns out things that are open for everyone to actually compete in, unlike basketball, unlike most sports, like I cannot compete in basketball, right? Like I could, I could have devoted my whole life to basketball. I would never be in the NBA. Sorry, sorry, Jonathan Little, you're not going to be an NBA star. So given Jonathan Little cannot be an NBA star, that course of life is off limits to me, right? Just straight up off limits, which is fine. You know, I, I don't have a problem with that. Poker is a weird thing where... I think a lot of people actually could be reasonable poker players if they devoted their life to it, like I did, like all the high stakes players did. And therefore, since there's a large amount of people who could be, you know, good at the thing, it's going to be very, 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 very highly competitive. And I don't want to make it sound like everybody in NBA is goofing off. I don't think they are. I think they've devoted their lives to it, right? But, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about the NBA. I'm not a basketball player. I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure that, oh, look, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself. There's nothing wrong with having fun. Nothing wrong with going off every once in a while. That said, in game time, I would recommend you be in game time mode. And in the poker world, you're often in game time mode. Will I be going to Seminole Hard Rock for the WPT? No, I do not have a COVID vaccine. Probably won't get one anytime soon due to where I'm staying at the moment just because there are none available. Therefore, I will not be going to a room with a lot of people. All right, what else? What else do we want to talk about? We talked about changing your environment. We talked about making the habits small or making the things that you're trying to implement small and doable, right? Um, oh yeah, the plan. So I talked about the plan of not butchering yourself after a tournament, because that's something I've had to deal with, right? Um, last year, and the year before that, I decided I wanted to do everything I could to make poker coaching be the premier training site. I wanted to take it from being, you know, Jonathan Little's niche training site to the best training site. And I don't know if we're even fully there yet, but it's certainly way up on the list at this point. And that's because I had a plan laid out, right? I decided the things that I needed to do over time to make the site the best site. And that meant, for example, um, ramping up good YouTube content, right? We're now spending many, many, many thousands of dollars a month on editing for YouTube that we were not before, but I'm happy to do it. It's a business expense, right? Um, we needed to hire a lot of the best coaches, not just good poker players, which is what a lot of training sites do, and they screw up by doing this, in my opinion. But we hired great coaches who also are great poker players. Very, very small number of people who are actually great coaches and great poker players. But 
I've hand selected about 12 of them. And uh, most of those were hired over the last year or two, right? Um, we needed to ramp up the GTO type stuff. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm aware that a lot of people want to make sure they are playing well. And GTO is a good thing to fall back on, right? So now we have the pre-flop charts, right? Um, those, those took a lot of time and effort to develop. I knew we wanted to have an app in the App Store. So now you can search poker coaching in your iTunes or Android App Store. It'll come right up with all sorts of good things, right? Anyway, I had a lot of things, tasks, essentially, that I knew we needed to put in place to become the premier poker training site. And we have a plan, right? And when I wake up in the mornings, I know the things that I've laid out that I need to do and that my team need to do in order to make poker coaching the best training site. Now, I don't know what this is in your life, but you need to develop a plan for whatever it is you want to do. Let's say you want to get good at poker. Let's say you are going to play cash games. Let's say you are going to try to make a living playing cash games. Or let's say you're going to try to supplement your income. Let's say you have a job where you make, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks an hour. You're happy with it. But you want to make an extra 20 or 30 bucks an hour playing cash games. And you're going to play, I don't know, 20 hours a week. Which a lot of people do. Certainly a reasonable thing to consider. And it's relatively low risk because if it fails, you sell the job, right? So that's a good way to go from transitioning from uh, perhaps having a job to being a professional poker player is to do it part-time and then transition slowly to more full-time. So what I did is what almost everybody did, right? So let's say that's what you're going to do. Um, what do you need to do first? Well, first things first, you need to find a game you can beat, right? So if you're playing cash games and you're breaking even, you need to get good at cash games first. You need to study a ton. If you have not spent a lot of time studying then you're, you should not expect to win, right? If you play a game that you cannot beat a lot, you're going to lose a lot of money. If you play a game that you can beat a lot, you're going to win a lot of money. So find a game you can beat. If you are not adequately skilled, you need to become adequately skilled. Um, check out pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. There's a free fundamentals course there. If you do not know everything there, you're probably not going to win at any poker game. I know the first lesson, few lessons are like very, the very basics, but, um, you know, after the first 20 minutes or so, it gets into things like pot odds, implied odds, range advantage, stuff like that, that you really need to understand if you don't have any chance to win. So make sure you understand that. Um, make sure you check out the Cash Game Masterclass at Poker Coaching if you're trying to become a Cash Game player, or the Tournament Masterclass if you want to become a Tournament player. If you are a Cash Game player, make sure you get in on our Cash Game Challenge at PokerCoaching.com slash Cash Game Challenge. That's going to be starting very soon. And you need to make sure you understand all of these things, right? You need to make sure that you fully understand cash games because you are going to try to become a professional cash game player. Once you have studied a lot, once you are more skilled than your opponents, make sure you're playing in a game with a reasonable rank structure to the point that you can go there and you can win. And then it just becomes a matter of continuing to study and putting in volume, right? Um, a lot of people, they want to complain when things are going poorly or they want to put in only a small amount of volume. You need to put in reasonable volume. 20 hours a week of live poker is fine. Online is fine, whatever. Um, again, like the actual number doesn't really matter. You just have to realize if I'm actually trying to give this a legitimate run at being a semi-professional poker player, you need to you need to give it a real shot, right? Um, you also want to make sure you're properly bankrolled. But again, if you have a $20 an hour job, hopefully you can save even 2 or $3 an hour, put that towards a bankroll. After a little while, you are properly bankrolled. So that's, that's uh, a plan, right? That's a plan that you put in place where you are going to study something every day or most days. It doesn't have to be all that long of studying, but you need to make sure you are studying poker every single day. You're improving your skills and you are devoting some chunk of your life to it. If you want to change your life in a way that is quite substantial, you are going to have to make some changes, right? So make sure you are doing that. Set a plan and stick to the plan. I see a lot of you typing in random stuff. What do you think about Zoom poker? I think it's a great way to get good at poker, a horrible way to make money. When is limping plus EV? Uh, depends on how bad your opponents are. The only time, only times it really makes a whole lot of sense is from specifically the small blind and specifically from the button when you're playing shallow stacked. 
let's see. You need preflop charts there. Pokercoaching.com in the tool section. We ever see Heartland Poker Tour, WPT, etc. coming back in 2021. There definitely, there's definitely WS, uh, WP, WPTs happening in 2021. They sent an email about that recently. What stakes do you need to be beatable? Is it 2-5 if they take 10% capped at 15? Ugh, brutal. Um, this is very, very high rake. I don't know. I, I would tell you to get in there and play it. It really just is a question of how bad are your opponents. Do I see questions on Instagram? Yes. Do you consider yourself hardworking compared to other top players on the tour right now? You seem to always be working on some project. Well, Robert, this is the problem. I am not spending my time studying poker as if my goal is to become the best poker player because I'm running a poker coaching business here as well, right? I realize that I am giving up, to some extent, my chance to be one of the top five poker players in the world in exchange for helping many, 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 many thousands of poker players who want to succeed at the game succeed at the game. And to be fair, I'm rewarded by all of you. You all um, pay me. I, I know you'd think that by the high quality of the show here that YouTube pays me to be here, but you'd be wrong. I am paid by an outside source that's right on the other side of this camera here. And I have given up my chance to be one of the best poker players in exchange for helping all of you. And I'm happy to do that. So I'm often am working on some project, but a lot of, like whenever I write a book, I'm not actually learning a ton in the process of writing the book. Certainly there are some things I have to study to make sure I have them right. But it takes time to write a book, like to physically sit down and type it all out, right? It takes many, 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 many hours. And those hours could have been spent studying specific spots that I may have problems with, which is, you know, fine. I'm happy to do it. That's, that's part of running the poker coaching business in exchange, and instead of like trying to become the best poker player. And... Um, to be fair, it's really, really hard to be the best poker player. To be fair, it's probably really hard to have a successful training site, but um, I guess I thought that'd be easier than becoming the best poker player. Plus, I like helping everybody, right? Is preflop limping considered a leak? Depends on how you do it. You're loving the tournament masterclass. I'm glad to hear it. Brad Wilson has some great contents on goal setting. Yeah, Brad Wilson is a coach at PokerCoaching.com. Make sure you check out his work and his podcast, Chasing, Chasing Poker Greatness. What's the best way to build a bankroll? Zoom Poker. No, definitely not Zoom Poker. Zoom Poker is very, very difficult. Um, I mean, maybe you can beat the small stakes games. You definitely cannot beat the high stakes games. Almost no one wins in the medium and high stakes games. Just because everybody's good. Uh, cash games or tournaments. So the general thought process is that tournaments are a whole lot softer than cash games, but there's a whole lot more variance in tournaments compared to cash games. So um, also tournaments require a very odd um, lifestyle to some extent, right? Like where if you want to play a tournament, you got to sit there all day. Whereas if you want to play cash games, you can play cash games for an hour and then quit, right? So cash games are definitely better for most people who have a job and a life and a family and all that stuff. But if you have nothing going on in life and you're properly bankrolled, then I think tournaments are probably a way easier way to accumulate more money right off the bat. It's not live. I think this is live. What separates Phil Ivy from Jonathan Little? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. He's a different human. Why do you talk so fast? I guess my brain works quickly. Believe it or not, I can talk fast and read slightly okay. Can you see the questions on Instagram? I don't know, let me scroll back. What are you all asking? What's the most important tools for... Po I, you have to realize, I don't answer the questions as soon as they come in. Believe it or not, this is not, ask Jonathan Little your question. He's going to answer it immediately. Sorry. Is it normal to lose when you learn something new? Of course it is. What's the most important tool in poker discipline? I don't even know what that means. Come on, everybody. Don't be a fish. Study. Study a ton. Have I played short deck since its popularity began to rise. I don't think its popularity has begun to rise. And I think if anything, it's getting close to dead, um, especially in America. I mean, I don't think it ever even became a thing in America. Um, whenever I think a game may take over, I study a lot. That said, I, it's pretty much been a waste of my time. I thought PLO was going to take over a long time ago. So I studied PLO a lot. When I say studied, I mean, I 
spent a decent amount of time actually studying, and I would usually play the game sort of full-time for like six months and try to become a winner at it, right? And um, did that with PLO, did great at 2, 4, and 5, 10 PLO online, but the game never really took off. Um, I did that with Horse, um, like mixed games, right? Because uh, mixed games were taking off for a while, but they never really took off. I mean, certainly there, you can find like these niche games that you can play, right? I mean, pe some people play PLO, right? Um, some people play Horse, but it turns out No Limit Texas Hold'em is uh, probably going to be the game for quite a while, even if it does get tougher and tougher. That said, I think tournaments are pretty much always going to be very, 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 very good. What's a GTO app, John? I don't think there is a GTO app, John, but there is a poker coaching app that has the GTO preflop charts in it. Does PLO have way more variance? So why even play it? Variance is your friend. I think a lot of people think variance is a bad thing. Variance is not a bad thing. You have to make sure that you understand variance. You plan around variance. But variance is what makes games profitable. I would venture to say PLO may be more profitable if you can find the right games than No Limit Hold'em. I mean, I would venture to say that I probably have a higher ROI in PLO tournaments compared to No Limit Hold'em tournaments. Although I haven't played a ton of them. But that's because people are way, way worse at those games because they haven't studied it a lot, right? So um, there's more variance, but who cares? Yeah, they'll have swings, but who cares? Play properly bankrolled. You gotta be properly bankrolled. Make sure you check out pokercoaching.com slash bankroll to make sure you're playing profitably bankrolled. That said, you need a substantially bigger bankroll for poker or for a PLO than you do for No Limit Hold'em. Three, four, five times, something like that, depending on how much variance you have in your game. He is sometimes sarcastic, but he tries to help people. <laughs> Yes. Does Poker Coaching have info for PLO and five-card players? No, it does not. Why? Well, we discussed this already, right? Where I am trying to give you skills that I know that I can help you use to succeed at poker long-term. And I have basically no experience playing five-card PLO. I played it a little bit. And uh, like I said, regular PLO, I would just send you to someone who I know has very good, high-quality training content because they're already doing it better than I would do it. So I tell people to go to Jay Nandez or Phil Galfond, right? These are people who have great, high-level PLO content. So, you know, make sure you study from people who are good, high-quality PLO players. Don't go to Jonathan Little to learn how to play seven-card stud because I don't like seven-card stud and I don't play seven-card stud, right? That would be a big error. Just because someone has a microphone does not mean that they are qualified to help you at a particular thing, right? Believe it or not, in 2021, it's very, very easy to have a microphone and an internet connection. And lots of people make content, but just because they make content does not mean that they know what they're talking about. It does not mean that they have your best interest in mind. It does not mean they are looking out for you, right? And just because someone is selling something does not mean it is good. You have to be a little bit discerning and actually listen to the things that people are saying, that they are promoting, etc. If they're promoting negativity and nonsense, well, <laughs> they're probably full of negativity and nonsense. If they are trying to help you improve your skills, and it's clear that from other people's success stories that it's actually happening, then, you know, that, that's probably going to be a good beneficial thing for you. But it's interesting. There's this is going to sound slightly bad, but there's um, a bunch of people out there who are who pride themselves on being able to learn things and share knowledge with others, etc. But um, let's say they decide to pick up poker and they start studying some some people's poker work, but the people they're studying are, um, for lack of better words, idiots. They study the idiots' content and they think, "Ooh, I'm good. I study this person's content." They've been deceived to some extent. And to be fair, maybe the idiot helped them go from being super duper fish to mild fish. But to people who are at a high level of something, like let's say me and poker, I can look at poker content and tell you pretty clearly if it's either good or bad, right? And when I see people studying stuff that is bad and they think it's good, ugh, it kind of kind of irks me, irks me the wrong way. It's, it's unfortunate. 71 likes only, come on everyone. If you enjoy this show, click the like button. If you don't enjoy the show, feel free to leave. It's okay. Everyone doesn't have to like everyone else. That said, don't waste your time not liking something. If you don't like Jonathan Little's show, 
Go watch somebody else's show. I will not be offended. And if you like it, click the like button and give it your full support. Oh, we have a poker coaching webinar starting soon. 19 minutes. If you're a poker coaching member, make sure you get into that. We're going to be going through a really, really intricate spot. Let me read it to you. Because basically everyone screwed it up. Myself included, first time I looked at it. I'm going to read this to you. In a tournament against competent opponents with a 20 big blind stack, you are on the button and it folds to you. What is your pre-flop strategy? This is an easy one. Everyone got this right. We have GTO charts that tells you the right answer. Okay. Suppose you raise and the big blind calls. Flop comes. Ace, eight, two. Big blind checks. What is your strategy? How do you play every single hand in your range? Take a second. Think about it. We're going to go through this. Spoiler alert. Ace, eight, two. This is easy. Bet frequently. Okay. Bet frequently using a uh, small to medium size. Fine. Everyone got that right too for the most part. Uh, probably 80% of people got that right. Suppose you bet 3.5 big blinds, opponent calls, turn is the six of diamonds and the opponent, or the big blind checks. What is your strategy now? This is where basically everyone screwed up. And I'm going to be talking about that in the Poker Coaching webinar. So make sure you check that out. If you want to get a good price on Poker Coaching right now, check out pokercoaching.com slash cash game challenge. What do I think of Negreanu's masterclass? Good uh, primer to, like a good crash course into poker. You have to understand, there are a lot of people who make two, four, six, eight hour courses out there and they try to market them as, as market them as if this is the only thing you need to succeed at poker. And that's not what Negreanu does. I'm not talking about Negreanu specifically. But there are a lot of people out there who make a course and say this is like all you need and it's, um, we're going to charge you 1500 bucks for it. And <laughs> I hate to break it to you, it's not how poker works. Are any of the poker coaching coaches coming to Florida for the WPT? I have no clue. From what I understand, most of the poker coaching coaches are not trying to do a whole lot of traveling at the moment. Um, that said, like, I don't know. Who knows what people are doing? Ask them. Send them a message on Twitter. They respond. We're all friendly poker players. We want to help all of you succeed at poker, and we're happy to interact. If you played mid-stakes Zoom poker, would you win? I have a pretty good sample of myself playing 1-2 and 2-5. I was roughly break-even at 2-5 and a tiny winner at 1-2 Zoom. This was like a year or two ago, so not not super recent today. Um, I was playing a ton on party poker when I was out of the country in January, just to like get content, and uh, I think their biggest Zoom game, was it 50 cent dollar? Maybe it was 1-2, I don't know. I want a pretty good amount of that, but like, I don't know. haven't put in a big sample. Haven't put in a big sample. Turns out, if you haven't put in a big sample, you cannot definitively say if you are a winning player or not. What do you think of Ben CB's tournament course? Good crash course. I think you should probably uh, do a little bit of polishing of it. And to be fair, it's tough because he's not a native English speaker, right? So he, um, you know, it's it's as if I, I mean, imagine if I had to, if I had to speak a, Another language to present my tournament course would probably be crappy. <laughs> I mean, he probably does an excellent job given English is not his native native language. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I, I learned a little bit from it. It's a solid crash course, right? Definitely very, very strong poker player. Do you think spinning goes are a good way to build a bankroll? Not really. Um, that said, that said, we have a spinning go course coming out on poker coaching sometime in the near future. It's not finished yet. We're in the process of making it. I'm not making it. Found one of the absolute biggest winners in Spin and Goes in the $500 games on Party Poker. He is making a course for all of you. That should be out soon. And uh, I've seen his graph. It goes straight up. So uh, maybe maybe it is a good way to to grind a bankroll. I I mean, look, I, I've seen his, uh, his charts, his GTO strategies, etc. And he plays really, really well. Very, very, dif very differently than the logical thing of just like, oh, you're all in a lot. Because you're actually not all in a lot. And that's why he's crushing it. So basically, I have had not great success in spinning goes. I'm roughly break even. But his graph goes straight up because he's good, right? Spent his, spent his last few years studying it. All right, let's see. How long are we going to stream? Well, this ends in about five minutes. And um, then we're going to go to the poker coaching webinar. You say it's not a crash course. So look, the idea of like, what is a crash course? In my mind, a crash course is a course that is, uh, you know, six to eight hours long that tries to cover most of the common spots quickly and efficiently. 
Lots of my courses are crash courses. There's nothing wrong with that. But to get really good at poker, you have to do a whole lot more than study six to eight hours of content and memorize preflop charts. I hate to break it to you. That's the basics. That's sort of like table stakes. Everyone who you play against in the medium and high stakes is already going to know their preflop charts reasonably well. They're already going to know how to play postflop reasonably well. And then it's the corner cases that give you your advantage and your edge, right? And that is why at Poker Coaching, we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ongoing webinars, ongoing courses, right? It's like continued learning to some extent. You can't just go to college, get a job, and then expect to be good at that job for the next 50 years, right? You have to continuously study, continuously improve, and continuously upgrade your skills. And if you don't do that, you are going to fall behind, right? And you can't think that you're going to watch a course that was made sometime in the past for six or eight hours, study some preflop charts, and then just be good to go. That said, it, it's def like things like that are probably more advanced than um, my free fundamentals course, right? Free fundamentals course is for super beginners who don't really know what they're doing at all. Maybe you call that a crash course because that's like basic to you. I'm not sure, right? But like for Jonathan Little, a crash course is something like these six or eight hour courses. But I, I get where people would say that a six to eight hour course is not a crash course if you have not already studied poker a ton, right? I get that. I, that's understandable. But you can't cover, like, you can't cover everything about preflop poker, postflop poker, various tournament formats, etc. in six to eight hours. You just can't do it. Hate to break it to you. Hate to break it to you. What's a good final table percentage if there are 600 people in a tournament? Do the math. You should final table at 1 in 60 times if you're break even. So what? 1 in 40? 1 in 30? That would be really good. Obviously, the goal is not to final table, though. The goal is to have the highest return on investment possible, which um, probably leads to not a whole lot of ninth, 8th, and 7th place finishes and a whole lot of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd place finishes. Oh, goodness gracious, goodness gracious. Everyone likes to everyone likes to think they know what they're doing, don't they? You know, something that's important to realize in today's world is that everyone thinks they are doing good and beneficial things. And I think that if we just have a little bit of compassion for each other, a little bit of um, empathy and understanding for each other, the world will be a whole lot of a better place. Don't be the person who's always trying to start fights and cause nonsense. It's easy to fling poo at other people, but all that really does is make you look like a poo flinger, right? It's very, very important to try to better the world and try to improve our community. And it's important to realize that the whole world is actually a community. Someone said something the other day, where are you from? Someone asked someone where they were from and they said, Earth. <laughs> And it's kind of true, right? We're not from our very, very tiny, tiny specific thing, where we, place where we only care about people right next to us, right? Realize that everyone out there is trying to do their best. And when you see someone doing something that seems perhaps counterproductive to you or negative to you, realize there's something going on in their mind that is making them think that this is the right thing to do. And... You, you got to have compassion is what it amounts to. <sighs> All right, I have to go. We have a webinar soon. Teaching high school kids during the quarantine is a challenge. Yeah, remote learning is a challenge. Um, Thomas says, you're honored that I named your son after you. Yeah, I, nom I named my son after Thomas Blakeney here. Welcome, Thomas. Glad to see you here today. You'll see me in the webinar. Yep, yep, yep. We'll be discussing how everyone bet way too infrequently on the turn. Turns out you get to bet pretty wide on ace eight two six. Why? What did everyone forget? What did a lot of people forget? The opponent's preflop strategy contains very few ace x. Ace eight two is really good for you and really bad for your opponent. Anyway, we're gonna go through all that, show the ranges, and go from there. Your first tournament is today. Oh no, you won your first tournament today. Good job, ship it. Congrats, Gary. Good job. Good work. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want you to make sure that you make good use of 2021. I know a lot of people made great use of 2020. I think I actually did shockingly well in 2020. 
Not to brag, but I know a lot of people also squandered 2020. And whether you did well in 2020 or you squandered it, realize that it's your decision to make 2021 good. Maybe you squandered the first 11 days or first 10 days of 2021 already. You can change, right? We discussed this. Make sure you develop habits that you can stick to that are easy for you to implement that will allow you to improve your life. If you're a single person and no one's going to give you crap for having a pull-up bar in the middle of your house, get a pull-up bar. If you know you drink too much and you want to drink less, get that alcohol out of the house. If you want to study poker, decide that whenever you brush your teeth, after you brush your teeth, you're going to go and you're going to study poker. You know what I mean? Like just develop habits, develop routines, develop mindsets that you can realistically stick to that will help you improve your life. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to help all of you be the best versions of yourself. And realize it's never too late to change. Have a great day. Good luck. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you for being here again. If you like this show, do me a favor. Click like, click subscribe. Also get in the giveaway. We're giving away a $5,000 buy-in seat to play with me and other poker coaching coaches on Poker After Dark next season. Make sure you check that out at pokercoaching.com slash pokerafterdark. And if you want a nice, easy way to go ahead and ease right into studying poker on a very regular basis, check out the Cash Game Challenge at pokercoaching.com slash cash game challenge. Thanks again for being here. 